Thank you very much. As you know, in IT, we believe in three-letter acronyms. So what I'm going to talk to is ESM. It's Enterprise Sustainability Management. And, and basically, it, it goes back really to what Renate Künas was talking about yesterday. If you recall, she was talking about, well, disruptive technologies, all the stuff we need uh, in order to make you know, our energy grids uh, refurbished and, you know, breakthrough technologies, just what we hear, heard a minute ago. But one big lever, if you will, is really greening the old economy. So from a potential perspective, you can really think about, you know, the existing companies, how do we support them in order to be more sustainable? And what does it take, really, in order to get those traditional players, those dinosaurs, if you will, into the green field? So that's, that's what I'm going to talk about. It's a little bit also going back to what Bank Saracen was talking about um, like half a day ago in the morning. Uh, banks and financial industries, they are very closely watching you know, and analyzing what big companies, all the DAX companies are doing in the field of sustainability in order to avoid risk and, of course, to understand compliance topics and so forth. And as we learn tomorrow, only Bank Sarazin has 50 analysts, you know, looking at companies, digging into data around carbon footprint and so forth. And this is showing you that, you know, companies are under enormous pressure to show to their stakeholders, to the external, to financial investors, to their employees, to their customers, you know, how do they perform when it comes to sustainability? So, my company, we sustain, what we do, we develop software for enterprise sustainability management. Basically, we enable companies to measure their sustainability performance. And you can think of it really as a, a mini ERP system. So what you know from the financial world, if a company does a, a balance sheet or a, a profit and loss statement, you know, we kind of transfer the principle into the sustainability world. And companies today, what they do, they issue what they call sustainability reports. So by now, like 80% of the Fortune 2000 companies globally, they issue sustainability reports. And this goes, as I said, from you know, carbon footprint over security and safety and health and employee retention and all the different indicators that have been defined in order to measure sustainability within a company. So, what are the drivers for our business case, at least? What we are embracing in We Sustain basically are three megatrends, we call it. Megatrends, of course, for us it's important. We are coming from the IT world, from the software world. Software as a service or cloud technology is the upcoming paradigm, if you will, in software. So companies are starting to consume their applications over the internet and not having kind of big data centers on their own premise, but, you know, do it in a distributed way. And our software is designed as a cloud solution, as a software as a service solution. So that's embedded in our, in our um, business concept. The other topic we are embracing is social. We believe that an enterprise software in future will be a social software, a social application. Why? Because the users within the companies, they are fed up with complex systems. If you know, anybody of you worked in a corporation, in a financial department and had to deal with SAP, Oracle systems, or PeopleSoft, or whatever, those systems, they are fairly complicated. And, you know, people from their private life, they understand, you know, it's, it's now time of Facebooks and so forth. And what they expect is really some similar form of collaboration, if you will, that they know from Facebook, from others, also within the company. So enterprise software in future will be social, is going to uh, going to contain social elements as, as well. And the last, of course, the big kind of pillar in our business case is sustainability as our main driver. Now, let us do a little bit of time traveling, and I could add lots of those slides. What are the issues that companies today have to deal with? 
This is an example. I think everybody, it's, it's time traveling. Yes, we have Fukushima, we had the dioxin scandal and all of that. It seems like we are living in an age where every month is something like this is happening. So this has been a year ago. You know, people at, in, in Southeast Asia at Foxconn jumping from the roof and, you know, working conditions very poorly. And I, I believe like 20 years ago, if something like this would, would have happened, nobody would have cared really. But today we are connected. You know, our means of communications have so grown tremendously. And today, if at a supplier side of Apple, somebody is jumping off the roof, is going to have a big, big impact on Apple. So therefore, Apple has to care. They have to take corrective actions. They have to justify, you know, why do I keep, you know, Foxconn as a supplier? So this is showing you, you know, this topic doesn't start at the border, uh, stop at the borderlines of the corporation, but also goes into the supply chain. A month later, we had this big campaign on Facebook uh, f uh, f coming from Greenpeace, where they pointed out that Nestle is using palm oil uh, from Borneo and, and kind of destroying habitats for, for, for the wildlife. And what happened, you know, this video, I don't know, probably most of you have seen that video, it has been downloaded 1.5 million times, there was a big campaign, you know, they received emails, and within 12 days, Nestle had to change the supplier for palm oil. So, enormous impact. And you could even see that for KitKat, you know, price, uh, the, the revenues has been going down. So, enormous pressure from the financial sectors. Consumers, they do care. They are connected. So, therefore, companies have to deal with that. And last but not least, you know, you can add Fukushima and so forth. So it's an important topic for companies. It's on the board level agenda. Everybody is talking about trust now. That's a survey coming from Accenture and you see, you know, the Nestle's of this world and so forth, Alcoa, everybody tries to create trust. So how can they really create trust? And, you know, this is going to our to our product, if you will. They can only create trust, not through greenwashing anecdotes that they are, they are telling, you know, new kindergartens in the Congo, but they have to show facts and data that is, uh, you know, really proving that those companies are improving their sustainability footprint. And this is what my company is doing. We have developed a, a software suite for enterprises which allows them and enables them to drive things like stakeholder management in the way you would potentially also handle your customers. We have a model, module developed for reporting and performance management around sustainability management. We have apps included from carbon footprinting over environment, health and safety, and also communication and collaboration, which allows companies to work internally in a much more kind of up-to-date fashion than they used in the past. So anybody interested talking to us, we'll be around. There's also Olaf Dierig. Uh, we, it's the two of us. Thanks for your attention. I hope you have a good ev event here. Thank you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oops. Any questions? How many customers do you have? Well, we, well we, are, we are new kids on the block. We, uh, we have been founded in August of last year, so August of 2010. Got a seed investment from Hightech Gründerfonds. We now finished our development. We released our first release. We have a fairly healthy pipeline, though we didn't go out and do any real kind of communication or sales kind of activities. But I think, you know, it's, it's really, I, I, I didn't believe it, but, you know, it was really by the mouth that the word spread and, you know, we had, have a good pipeline. But yes, we, we are early stage. Yes, yes, yes. Are you actually looking for funding? Oh, yes. Uh, if, I mean, if I wouldn't look for funding, I wouldn't talk to you, of course. How much? Uh, I think in the, in the area of two million. That's what we are looking for. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, any more questions? Remarks, comments? So these two million you have to finance sales and marketing? And yes. Basically, you know, software development, we believe we have made a fairly good job and now it's kind of, you know, creating the buzz around the product in order to, to go to market. Thanks a lot for coming. Yeah, thank you.